This is going to be problem, what I call 2A, and we're going to say it's the non-singular linear system problem. This is where most people start um, linear algebra. Okay, could you guess the fast way to do this? So NLSP, could you guess what that means? Non-singular linear systems problem. It's the first of the linear systems problems that we're going to deal with. And in this case, we're going to say let N be an element of the natural numbers. And then we're going to let A be a square matrix. A given, uh-oh, I just sinned. It's never felt so good to sin. Um, Non-singular. Matrix. Um, and B, could you guess how big B would have to be? Well, be careful. It's the same style of B as over there. So how big was B over there? The number of rows of B was equal to the number of rows of matrix A. OK. So in this case, how many rows does matrix A have? n of them. So how big should b be? n by 1. So let's let a be a non-singular matrix and b be a given vector. Then the NLSP is to find, can you guess what I'm about to write? Yeah. How big would x have to be? Look back over there. Let's see, the number of rows of x is equal to the number of columns of A. The number of rows of x is equal to the number of columns of A. n by 1. And what should be true about these? A times my unknown vector x is equal to my vector b. And let's just go ahead and analyze the dimensions. This is going to be a habit. I want you to write the dimensions 5,000 times until you're literally throwing up because you've done this so, more, so much. And then I want you to do it 10,000 more times. Every professional linear algebra that I know sees dimensions. Haley Joe Osmond sees dead people. We see dimensions. <laughs> OK? So n by n. N by, n by 1. How big is the output? N by, n by 1. OK. Claim. The NLSP is a backward problem. Why? All right. What was the function that we defined? The function we defined is called matrix vector multiplication. So we're going to let f go from Rn into Rn be defined as f of x equals a times x. All right, let's think about the forward problem. In the forward problem, which did I give you? Did I give you the input or did I give you the output? Yeah, I gave you the input, and then the output was unknown and desired. It's my favorite name for a Mexican soap opera that's never been made. <laughs> unknown and desired. Right? OK. So in the forward problem, I give you the input, and I calculate the output. What's true about the backward problem? I start in the range, and I ask you which input in the domain produces that output in the range. So could you imagine what we say in this case? Which one is unknown and desired? X. X. This is now unknown and desired. And I forget how to say that in Spanish at the moment. Desconocido. In... No, nobody's with me on that one? OK, that's all right. I think it's break time, huh? So which one's unknown and desired?
Input or output? Input. Which one's known? So here, we're trying to find the image of x under the map A, and that image we're going to call B. Here, we're trying to find the pre-image. So if you give me the image in the, domain, in the codomain or the range, I'm going to find the thing in the domain that produces that image under that map. That's a backward problem. Do you see how they're related to each other? And don't worry, anybody felt like they'd been punched in the face when I said non-singular? Hey, don't worry. We'll get used to that pain. <laughs> yeah. Just for now, I just kind of want to get you flavors. 